to become mighty vessels i just saw an anointing rest on you this role in the name of jesus i don't know where you are but i pray may that grace now let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension in the name of jesus christ welcome to christocentric message on this channel you are going to get soul lifting messages faith-based content prayer drills and videos that would help you grow spiritually remember to subscribe to the channel like the video you are about to watch and comment on it stay blessed god is i'm not singing a miracle walker a glorious this is true that god is we know you as a miracle walker god is You know what a miracle is? A miracle is an interruption of the normal course. The normal course of things the way they usually should be. It was God that made the laws and it is within his power to create a system around and above it. Truly speaking, God is a miracle worker. Mm. A miracle happens when an act of God comes to defy the natural laws, the natural course of things. And that's what will happen to somebody tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me start tonight by reminding us that God is a miracle worker. He is a wonder walking God. It is wonderful to know that he is love. It's wonderful to know that he is the lamb. It's wonderful to know that he can be friend. In fact, it's wonderful to know that based on our oneness, the Bible even identifies him as brother. But there is a dimension of God that we need tonight as a miracle worker, a wonder-walking God. Zephaniah chapter 3, please, and verse 17. The Bible reminds us that the Lord in the midst of thee is mighty not just the lord who is seated on the throne the lord who is in the midst of ye he has come as a mighty god and as a result he will save he will rejoice over thee with joy he will rest in his love he will joy over thee with singing in psalm 62 and verse 11 psalm 62 and verse 11 the Bible says, God has spoken once. Say amen. amen. It says, twice have I heard this, that how many? Power belong unto God. Power belongs unto God. Once have I spoken, twice have you heard, that when it has to do with power, it belongs to God. Not God and someone else. Not God and colleagues. Not God and other demons. Power exclusively belongs to God hallelujah these two scriptures establish the fact that God is a miracle walker and God is a wonder walking God but you see the way God walks among men is that he walks through men please listen he walks his wonders his signs his marvelous acts through men he has chosen that system as an act of his power as an act of his intelligence that as mighty as he is he has chosen to reveal his power through men that means that if there are not available vessels a territory may not seem to witness the kind of power that scripture proposes that God has. That does not mean that he does not have the power. It means the vessels who can give him allowance to find expression may not be there. So when it has to do with the lifting of men, it takes the mighty God and yielded vessels. 
the mighty God and yielded vessels. The mighty God and yielded vessels. Not necessarily powerful vessels. The mighty God and yielded vessels. If you leave the mighty God alone, men will not be able to see his power. It takes the mighty God in partnership with yielded vessels. The formula is the spirit and the bride say come. The spirit can say come, but if there is no bride on earth saying come, there will be no manifestation. The spirit can say be healed if the bride does not echo it to say be healed. E Ezekiel said, I prophesied as I was commanded. When God spoke, the bones did not obey. It was until a man echoed what God had said, then the bones began to move. This is how it works. God was already speaking, prophesy to these bones. And yet the bones kept quiet as though they did not hear God. But when the yielded vessel repeated what God said, the Bible says there was a sound. So God is a miracle worker. He's a wonder walking God, but he walks through men. Are we together? Isaiah chapter 62, please, from verse 1 to 8. Be patient and follow patiently. For Zion's sake, I will not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake, I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. It says, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Say amen. amen. Verse 3 says, thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Ah, may this be a prophetic word for someone tonight. That in the name of Jesus, thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. But thou shalt be called Hephzibah, and thy land Beulah. For the Lord delighted in thee, and thy land shall be married. Verse 5. For as a young man marrieth a virgin, so shall thy sons marry thee. And as the bridegroom rejoiceth over the bride, so shall thy God rejoice over thee. I have said, now watch this. He tells them everything that he's going to do. This is what I can do. This is what I want to do. This is what I am able to do. But there is a limitation until this is fulfilled. To that end, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, he says, keep not silence. Uh -huh. And give him no rest till he establish until he makes Jerusalem a praise in the earth. He says, the Lord has sworn by his hand and by the arm of his strength, surely I will no more give thy corn to be meat to thy enemies. And the sons of the stranger shall not drink thy wine. For which thou hast labored. But, it says, to make this a possibility in your life, I have set watchmen. And I have mandated those people, don't be silent. Bring your petitions before heaven. Give authorization to heaven. Even as mighty as God is, he has so designed his system such that if there is a mighty God and no yielded vessels, the land will remain barren. It takes God and yielded men, not powerful men. The, the men look powerful because his power flows through them. The mighty God and yielded vessels Many people focus on the mighty God. But then they forget that his power flows through yielded vessels. In 2 Kings chapter 6. Let's look at this. There's a story that I want to use to establish a lesson. And then we allow the Holy Spirit to just move. 2 Kings chapter 6. We'll begin our reading from verse 25 for sake of time. 25. The Bible says, And there was a great famine in Samaria. And behold, 
they beside it and an ass's head was sold for four score pieces of silver can you imagine that level of poverty and the fourth part of a cab of a dove's dung for five pieces of silver and as the king of israel was passing by upon the wall please listen to this for god's sake there cried a woman unto him saying help my lord o king and he said i love the king i'm not sure that the king acknowledged the god of heaven but i loved his understanding this already is a message for someone before we continue he said if the lord do not help thee when shall i help thee out of the barn floor or out of the wine press that means we have a wine press in this kingdom and we have a storehouse but if god does not authorize the help our wine presses and our bands our bank accounts and everything remain useless until god helps that means whatever you have on earth is only useful when god has really helped you from the realm of the spirit the king is saying i am king but i can do nothing if the god of heaven does not authorize help for you next verse and the king said unto her what ailed thee now listen to this interesting story and she answered this woman said unto me give thy son that we may eat him today and we will eat my own son tomorrow so we boiled my son and did eat him and i said unto her on the next day now that we have eaten your own son we are still hungry give me your own son that we may eat him and she had hid her son this is not a parable that once upon a time on earth people were so poor that a woman looked around no animals and she looked at her son that she stayed nine months to have him and said you know what son i love you but we're about negotiating your destiny they boiled one whole son and two women ate the son. By the next day, they wanted to boil the other one. And then the other woman remembered, no, no, no. I went through too much to have this child. And she ran away. That was the subject of controversy. The Bible says, when the king heard the words of the woman, he rent his clothes. And he passed upon the wall. And the people looked and behold he had sackcloth upon his flesh what a responsible king what what are you ruling when all the children are being eaten by their mothers and he said god do so and more to me if the head of elisha the son of shaphat shall stand on him on this day he was angry because he was smart enough to know listen carefully there is a lesson for us to learn here the king knew that this god they talk about i don't know him but i know he's not that wicked if he has not moved there is a yielded vessel who has refused to allow this happen and the king was right the king did not blame god he said there is someone who is responsible for the salvation of these people i will look for him and remove his head for not cooperating next verse but elisha sat in his house and the elder sat with him and the king sent a man from before him oh, but look at the power of prophecy but ere the messenger came to him and said to the elder see ye how this son of a murderer has sent to take away my head he says look when the messenger cometh, shut the door and hold him fast at the door is it not the sound of his master's feet behind him and while he yet talked with them behold the messenger came down unto him and said behold this evil is of the lord what should i wait for the lord any longer they were angry and elisha said the mighty god and the yielded vessel hear ye the word of the lord thus saith the lord god is saying but i'm the one who is echoing it to you it says tomorrow about this time shall a measure of flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria now seven verse two 
this is the lesson that i'm praying the devil will not let anyone be a victim of this it says then the lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of god and said behold if the lord will make windows in heaven might this thing be and he said behold because you have said this thou shalt see it with your eyes but thou shalt not eat thereof so let's establish what we're dealing with here it starts by saying when you read the text before that king ben haddad came and you know fought samaria and then the bible records that samaria now became victims of war and there was famine and women were boiling their children all around and eating their children and then the king gets angry sends a message and the prophet now says you know what god has spoken by this time tomorrow this entire famine will cease to a point where you have food in abundance and when he said that the king said i mean the one who the king would lean on said even if god will open the windows of heaven there is something about pain and prolonged situations that are negative they can begin to deflate how far you think god can go as far as his might is concerned you can start reducing your standards as far as what you know god can do lord this is what i trust you for but now i think it's, it's like you can't go that far so just just whatever it is you can do for me and the king said elisha said because you have said this you will see it and yet not eat of it next verse now i want you to pay attention to how the miracle happened because there is a lesson here to learn also and this is what will be happening over someone's life this night god speaks that he's bringing redemption not to an individual not to a family not to a community but to an entire land now the prophet the yielded vessel now declares it let me show you what happens the moment a word comes from god and is accurately declared to men miracles begin to happen the spirit of the living god watch this there were no available men and god found four leprous men you see i told you that when it has to do with god you don't need to be powerful all it needs is for you to be yielded you cannot associate power with four leprous men as far as bringing a harvest to a territory is concerned and there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate and they said to one another why sit we here till we die please look up do you realize that this man what was moving them to start becoming dissatisfied was this they were under the influence of that prophecy they had been there but they said you know what let's not sit here till we die little did they know the same way you felt why sit at home can i just come for koinonia you thought you were just coming and your neighbor who would not come say can i go with you you didn't know that a word was already sent that this is your season of lifting this is your season of encounter next verse please keep that scripture for us the bible says and they rose up in the twilight to go to the camp of the syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp ay, 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 behold there was no man there what happened for the lord back to that lord again all power belongs to the lord for the lord had made the host of the syrians to hear a sound of a noise of chariots and a noise of horses even the noise of a great host look at what god is doing here and they said to one another lo the king of israel had hired against us the king of the hittites the king of the egyptians who told them it's a terrible thing when god is against you anything can fight you anything can fight you when god is against you four leprous men ladies and gentlemen we are intelligent people if even if agile men even if olympians are running if you are in this auditorium you can't hear their sound as soon as those guys began to walk the bible said that these people just had and they started even suggesting the nation that were hired the hittites the egyptians to come to us 
verse 7 wherefore they arose and fled at twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses even the camp as it was and fled for their life and when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp they went into one tent and did eat and drink do you know what it means to have this kind of breakthrough as a leper nobody is fighting you no oppression nobody is pushing you and saying unclean unclean you wait till we eat you know that was a custom then they will push them away and when they carried silver and gold and raiment and went and hid it and they came again and they entered into another tent everybody say prepared blessings and carried tents also and went and hid it verse 9 they said something to themselves that god is telling some of you and they said to one another we do not well this day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace if we tarry till the morning light some mischief will come upon us now therefore come that we may go and tell the king that means we can't enjoy this alone we have seen the power and the grace of god but remember we have relatives too remember we have other people who need this miracle so they came and called on to the porter of the city and told them saying we came to the camp of the syrians and behold there was no man there neither voice of man but horses tied asses tied tents as they were and he called the porters and they told to the king they told it to the king's house within uh-huh and the king arose in the night and said unto the servants i will now show you what the syrians have done unto us you see the king there is a way that god will bless you you would think it's a lie you will still not trust the blessing this is what is happening the king said i am smart these guys are not that weak it's an ambush they know that we be hungry therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field saying when they come out of the city we shall catch them alive and get into the city and one of the servants answered and said let some take i pray thee five of the horses that remain which are left in the city behold they are as all the multitudes of israel that are left in it behold i say they are even as the multitudes of the israelites that are consumed and let us send and see now watch this they took therefore two chariot horses and the king sent after the host of the syrians saying go and see be patient and they went after them unto jordan and lo all the way was full of garments and vessels which the syrians had cast away in their haste and the messengers returned and told the king and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the egyptians so the a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel according to the word of the lord was he reading and the king appointed the lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate and the people trod upon him in the gate and he died as the man of god said who spoke when the king came down to him please look up there is a very powerful lesson here god speaks through a yielded vessel and he says by this time tomorrow so and so would happen and an intelligent man comes logically you would think god will forgive him and say they've suffered there is i mean don't blame the man the prophet said you will see it and you will not eat of it they now made him in charge of it and while he was trying to push people let's be orderly here they matched him you don't act like that with hungry people these guys have not eaten women who were boiling their children and here is a man who already the curse of the lord is upon him standing at the gate and they matched him and killed him there they didn't even know he was dead everybody was passing to go and eat god is a mighty god he can not only save individuals and families he can save cities and nations in one day if this were a parable the bible would tell us it was a parable a day came upon this earth this event actually happened hallelujah 
God works through men. God is mighty, but his almightiness, the fullness of the potential of his power is only seen when there are yielded vessels. Please take note. It is not as though God is limited. God is all-powerful. But if you do not find yielded vessels, God will seem to look weak. Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13. Hosea 12 and verse 13. Here's what the Bible says. And by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who brought them out of Egypt? No prophet can bring people out of Egypt. It is the Lord. But it happens by a prophet. Nobody has the power to heal. You can't just speak to someone who is holding crutches with their legs broken and says, throw that thing and start walking. No, no. That kind of power is not given to men on their own. However, by a prophet, the Lord, the Lord can stand behind an individual as weak as you are, as powerless as you may seem, as incapable as you may seem, but when he stands behind you, ah, everything becomes possible when he holds your hand. Impossible becomes possible when you hold my hand. Everything becomes possible when you hold my hand impossible becomes possible ladies and gentlemen do not ask how god will visit you tonight that's not a wise question mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man he said no that is not your realm yours is to believe the dynamics of its manifestation god is like a movie director he can use anything to make his word come to pass and by a prophet please back to that scripture the lord brought israel out of egypt and by a prophet was he his israel preserved second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20 popular scripture this is your own assignment tonight second chronicles 20 and verse 20 the bible says and they rose up early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of tekoa and as they went for jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O judah and ye inhabitants of jerusalem believe in the lord your god so shall ye be established he says believe his prophets so shall ye prosper so there are two entities to believe number one and in order of priority you must believe the lord the creator of the ends of the earth the almighty and all powerful you owe it to believe him but in addition to believing him you must believe the vessel that he uses believe in the lord believe his prophets you can believe his prophets and not believe in the lord that is idolatry you can believe in the lord and not believe in his prophets your answer will remain in the realm of the spirit hallelujah i assure you your answer will remain in the realm of the spirit and that's not where you need it if you believe in his prophets more than you believe in the lord you are already practicing witchcraft and idolatry in order of priority you must believe in the lord but you will not believe in the lord god you must believe in the lord your god this is my message tonight pay attention the lord that you must believe in must be your god for it to work you cannot believe in the lord one creator somewhere <clears throat> the lord that produces this kind of result for you must be the lord who has become your god he is lord but is he your god you are my god this is not a general thing you are my god listen you can believe in the lord 
the God that your mother worships that you have refused to surrender your life to you can believe in the Lord your God the one you had one zealous preacher talking about tonight before you even see all the miracles he wants to be the Lord but he wants to also be your God many people believe he is the Lord but they are not interested in having him become their God in this kingdom when it has to do with exploits and results it is the people that do know they are God not God they are God there is a relationship component to exploits your God how can I call on your name and end up in shame no way How can I bow down before you and then bow down before a man? No way. No way. Because you are my God. Tonight, you have come to the Lord whether you believe him or not he is still lord the earth is the lord's listen there are four conditions for anyone to be called lord over a territory according to psalm 24 and verse 1 psalm 24 and verse 1 gives us the litmus test if we must call you lord there must be four things that you must own Number one, the earth. Number two, the resources, the fullness. Number three, you must control the mind system, the mind control system. And number four, the inhabitants. If you own the land and you don't own the resources, you are not Lord. You must own the earth, the physical environment. Number two, you must have dominion over the resources within that territory. Number three, you must control the mind of the people. By control, that means that it is your values that influence the thinking of the people. And then number four, you must have influence over the inhabitants there. This also is the principle of territorial dominion. If you want to take over a territory for Jesus, please keep that scripture there. This must be the four things you look for dominion over land dominion over the resources within that territory dominion over the mind control systems and influence over the inhabitants that territory is over whoever wills control over the land the resources the mind control system and the inhabitants is lord this is all satan looks for when satan comes to a territory he wants to empower men who would own physical land because there is a dimension of faith and dominion that is tied to land. This is for another day. So we know that he is Lord because he owns the earth. He owns the resources. The Bible says the cattle on a thousand hills even belong to him. The mind control system and they that dwell therein, they all belong to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are we together? Yes. So, if you believe in the Lord, the mighty God of heaven, and then you believe in his servants, the Bible clearly tells you that you have fulfilled the condition that makes for possibilities. Most people, listen carefully, most people believe in the Lord, but he has not become their God. You may be seated here all across and following online. You came to church. You're welcome. And that is wonderful and even commendable. But this Lord, who is a miracle worker, within a few minutes from now, we're going to be celebrating the triumph of light over darkness. The triumph 
of the power of God over mundane principalities and powers. God himself will flaunt his glory once again in the midst of his people. He's going to be signing a signature like Julius Berger will build. And if you are saying who built it, there you will see a big B there. God is about to do something and sign his signature upon your life that everyone who sees cannot say this is your boss no this cannot be your boss this cannot be your mother-in-law this cannot be some politician somewhere this one is god but hear me you can receive miracles tonight you can celebrate what god is doing following across the nations of the earth you can receive all kinds of things and leave and if they ask you who healed you you can tell them the lord if they ask you who lifted you from this dungeon who broke this age-long captivity but for us we will not just say the lord i will say he's the lord my god i can introduce you to him if you tell them the lord you don't have a relationship with him to extend his power to others you should not just stop as the lord he must become your god He's my God, and His name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. You're my King, and Your name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. Yahweh. Listen, you've heard me share it here, believers. Listen. When you go to a herbalist, when you go to some kind of necromancer or one who manipulates the realm of the spirit in an attempt to provide solutions, did you know that he does not need a relationship with you? You don't even need to know his name. How many native doctors have given their names to people? They don't care because the, the point of contact is just your need. It's not a relationship. But you see, when you come to this God... He's not just interested in giving you a miracle, power, job, healing. Uh -uh. He feels it's an insult to give you those things first. The first thing he presents is himself. Himself. Not just his power, himself. And he's not ashamed to come and live within an individual. So that you don't just call him the miracle worker alone. You can also call him your God. This is where sometimes, respectfully speaking, men and women of God make this mistake. We keep presenting to people a God that is far and they watch his power, they watch his grace, they watch his wonders and then at the end of it we share the grace. And they leave having received from a stranger. They leave having been blessed by a stranger. Many of you go to the market and you have a few people you call customer. They call you customer, you call them customer. Is that true? If you are going to go and buy goat or a ram, sometimes you go straight to them because you know. In fact, sometimes you have a relationship with them. You can call. Do you have this? They say, oh, you are welcome. So it's true you are coming to buy. But sometimes, even before the buying and selling, you can sit down. How are you? How are your children? How is everything? You will even have nicknames. A day will come, you will sit down there and not talk about buying and selling. Because your relationship now is beyond what you are buying. What God is looking for, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me, believers. God does not just want people who just prostitutes themselves around him. Come and pick miracle. Come and pick breakthrough come and pick healing come and pick this god i've had enough let me run eh when i have a problem i, I i'm telling you even if i don't know you i know a man of god who knows you and god says i will love you because love is my nature god does not have love he is love and he cannot deny himself however there is a more excellent way when he becomes your god so that is you don't have to wait until a koinonia service alone right there where you are in your room you can tell him lord i thank you for your servant but i also know that you are my god when you meet jesus the first thing he gives you is not a miracle like a physical miracle 
The first thing he gives you is not money, not cars, not a job. He offers himself. You can reject him. He will still respect your choice. This is the marvelous thing about him. You can say, Jesus, I'm not here for you. Just give me the job that I hear you can give me. And he says, well, I will give you because I love you. But is this all you want? I, I was preaching somewhere. I think it was in Enugu. And I was giving them an illustration. Imagine, for instance, let's say, for example, you have been calling me since yesterday. Apostle, I need to see you. It's an urgent issue. And I said, what is the issue? Say, I must see you. Imagine that you walk up to me and all of a sudden your attention is on my shoe or on my cloth. And I'm saying, okay, I'm here. And no, no, no. When I said I wanted to see you, it was not really you. I wanted to see your cloth through you. It's your cloth that I'm interested in. And you keep looking at the cloth and say, Taylor, just um, get this measurement. That's all I really want. Imagine the disappointment. All that call is just because you wanted something and not the person so we pray and fast god come now and when he shows up we say no not your face just where is your hand that's where i'm looking for i hear that at your right hand there are pleasures i don't want the left give me the right hand quickly let me get the pleasures and be on my way it may look very funny but jesus is speaking to many of us right now believe in the lord your god believe in the lord your god you have believed in the lord but can he become your god you have come with pain you have come with all kinds of issues many of us have written you know we've been having this miracle service for years but there is no single month ministry has taught me that there is no exhaustion to the reality of human needs. Even if you were to hold a miracle service every day, you will still have people. That means when we say, if you have come for this week, don't come again. You will still see people as though they never received from God. Because the needs of people keep increasing. As one problem is solved, the devil now tries to come to cause another problem again. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring sickness. Just when you are celebrating, then he tries to bring something else. But now, thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph. I sense in my heart to make the altar call now. In this kingdom, you strike when the iron is hot. And now that the Holy Ghost has spoken to us, he needs to become your God. Now, can I be honest with you? There are many believers who are not serious with God. There are others who do not even believe him. Some of you probably were invited by so many others. You are in the main auditorium. Some of you are down all of the overflows outside or following online. And you're saying, Apostle, I... I, I hope that this your God is really God. The Bible says you can taste and see that the Lord is good. You shouldn't just hear. You can eat. There can be an experience where you taste and see. Like going to a restaurant, you can see a publicity. This is a lovely meal. We make this, we make that. You can actually enter the restaurant, order the food and taste, and then for yourself, tell whether they lied to you a man can taste and see that the lord is good can i tell you this many of you have struggled you have lived defeated lives anyone who does not have the immunity that his relationship with the lord jesus brings remains a perpetual victim of satan a perpetual victim of causes there is no hope for permanent deliverance for such an individual even if you administer the power of god the demons will live with speed because they know that there is no legal basis for the continuity of his freedom they will only wait for him and return back with joy the first ultimate and greatest deliverance the first ultimate and greatest healing the first ultimate and greatest prosperity is to come and receive this gift of himself god offers you himself i want to start a relationship with you here's what the bible says for god that same god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 popular scripture that he gave his one and only 
John 3 16 his only begotten son that whosoever including you whosoever not some preacher not some whosoever believeth in him there is a law that that person should not perish listen you may be here and you may be the first person to make this decision some of you have had dreams where god has told you you are the one who he will raise to tear down these horns that have attempted to destroy god over your family let tonight be your night we will celebrate miracles signs and wonders but i need you to make this decision immediately for jesus i'm going to make an altar call wherever you are seated here under the sound of my voice in the main auditorium the galleries all the overflows down to the basement the overflow outside and those following online jesus christ is calling you listen you have a choice this is the beautiful thing about god he so loves you that he will not force you but can i tell you when love calls answer before power calls love calls power comes out of that love you are here and you are saying apostle if you will give me an opportunity i sincerely want to win that war tonight and then for some of you the devil is telling you with all that has happened in your life all that you have done all that your family has done do you think god will accept you he can always give you a new beginning and then there are people who are saying apostle i remember giving my life to jesus but as it is my life has gone haywire i need to rededicate my life i'm going to count one to five listen to me do not be ashamed if i tell you to come and collect a check here you will not ask whether your hair is in the right place or your shoe is in the right place run like there's fire on the mountain as i count one to five come to jesus one All the overflows please run to jesus don't look at anyone don't worry about who is looking at you too apostle i need jesus but i'm ashamed of the person who i came with please leave that person and come to jesus this is a matter of your life and your destiny koinonia are you celebrating salvation young and old rich and poor come to jesus he will not suffer my foot to be moved i carry his presence everywhere who am i your mind is so full of me mortal man awesome god mortal man awesome god he will not suffer my foot to be moved i carry his presence everywhere you are my your mind is so full of me hey, i'm just a but you are the awesome come to jesus what a harvest celebrate jesus young and old together hear me the more people yield and genuinely hand over to the governing authority of jesus the more a territory can be transformed a territory does not just get transformed by giving people money to start skill acquisition that is wonderful but the problem of man is first a spiritual problem the problem of man is not just a financial problem the problem of man is not just an intellectual problem the bible all religions as a matter of fact it is in this one thing they agree that the problem of man is rooted in the realm of the spirit I salute every one of you for standing here some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears can i tell you this don't let the devil lie to you 
that Jesus cannot give you a new beginning. That's why he brought you here. I don't care how it has been. I don't care what you have done or not done. When you come to him, you see, rebels don't come to Jesus. Rebels run away from him. So that you have come before the throne of grace. The Bible says to boldly come that we may obtain grace and we may obtain mercy and find grace to help even in time of need. The only thing I'll ask you to do is that when you stand here, mean every prayer from the depth of your heart. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is here. Someday when we meet in heaven, we'll celebrate one another and say, thank God you made this decision. If you are still joining them, please come quickly. In case you were thinking about it or you were still shy, join them, leave your seat and come very quickly. Don't worry, we'll not take time. When we pray, they'll just have your details and you'll return back and we'll be ready for the miracle service. Lift your right hand everywhere. Lift it high above your head. Let Jesus see that you are not joking. You mean business with him. Please say this after me. Say it loud and clear. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I give upon myself. My ability to save myself is limited. Therefore, I hand over my life, my destiny to you. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you are the only Lord, Savior, and King. Therefore, I ask you to come into my heart, be my Savior, be my Lord, and be my King. I receive forgiveness of sin. I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. And I declare that from today, I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you now. Some of you are crying. Let me tell you, everybody who takes God seriously... It will take you seriously. Anyone who claims that he did not make this prayer, whether in the room or in the church, is not born again. If you are born again, you must have made this prayer at one time in your life. You don't naturally inherit salvation. You must make this. You don't wish salvation. You don't assume salvation. There is something called the assurance of salvation father thank you for these precious ones you have brought them oh god some of them are the ones you have anointed to be the deliverers of their family some of them have gone through all kinds of pain and disappointment lord some of them have come here tonight as their last resort they have come trusting you they have come believing that only you can save some of them have tried all kinds of options they have tried friends. They have tried all kinds of things. And it has failed them. But they have come to you. He says, this is eternal life that they may know you. The one true God. And Jesus, his son. They have declared, and according to the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. I declare that the power of sin, of Satan, of hell, and of the grave is broken from your life. Satan, take your hands off their lives and their destinies in the name of Jesus Christ. Take your hands off their lives and their destinies. From tonight, I declare that you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us in that we can be called the children of God. I declare that you are sons and daughters of light in the name of jesus christ now please look up all of you i want you there are a number of you counselors let's be very fast because we are going to start praying i want you to just um go to my right which is your left you will see the counselors just waving the placard please follow them cooperate with them they will have your details just for a few minutes and you'll return to your seat and join us as we pray let's celebrate them all the overflows the same thing Zaria also is connecting. Zaria, make sure you are doing the same thing right now. Those who 
have made this prayer listen please if you made this prayer perhaps you are in your home your office wherever just following from your device it doesn't matter you can use the email that you find online there and let us know that you just gave your heart to jesus christ and there'll be a few people who will just follow you and um, follow up on you let's celebrate them in the name of jesus christ dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the.